Okay. Uh, so a glaucoma suspect, as we already saw, is a susceptible individual or a group of people who are more at risk of developing glaucomas. They could either be open angle, closed angle, or secondary glaucomas. However, the hallmark sign which differentiates a true glaucoma patient from a glaucoma suspect is the presence of progressive uh, glaucomatous visual field loss, which is distinct from any neurological disease or any other non-progressive defects that mimic glaucoma. So aim of my presentation is basically just to highlight the importance of detailed and correct clinical history in all cases suspected of having glaucoma and importance of a thorough clinical examination of all eyes to pick up cases of suspected glaucoma. So evaluation protocol in all our cases is a detailed history taking, a good visual acuity examination, thorough slit lamp examination from the cornea to the anterior vitreous, always, always a Goldman's applanation tonometry, indentation gonioscopy with a four mirror lens, Retina evaluation inclusive of the periphery, disc evaluation with uh, a 78D or a 90 adapter lens, basic ancillary investigations like central corneal thickness uh, uh, measurements, and uh, structural and functional investigations like the OCT and the perimetry. In the next few slides, with a few case examples which we normally see in our OPD, I'll try to highlight the importance of history and clinical examination in picking up glaucoma suspects. So our first case is a 38-year-old male who's just come in for a regular eye checkup, no issues with vision as such, but gives history of fa uh, family history of glaucoma in mother and in maternal aunt. He's a known myope, he's been wearing glasses since he was 10 years, and also gives us a history of trauma to the right eye with a ball 10 years ago. Is he a glaucoma suspect? Let's have a look. So on examination, best corrected visual acuity, both eyes, sorry, uh, was a 6-6-N-6 six, six, with a minus 3 diopter sphere of myopia. Slit lamp, both eyes was normal. Anterior chamber in the right eye was slightly deep. Pressures, both eyes okay. This healthy. But gonioscopy of the right eye reveals almost a three quadrant angle recession. So what we see from this patient so far is there is family history, there is history of trauma, and there is myopia. Are these important risk factors? So family history, as we all know, is a very important risk factor because various population-based studies have told us that in patients of glaucoma uh, with family history and siblings were almost 3.6 times, six, nine times more susceptible to have glaucoma and around 2.17 times in second degree relatives. And again, a, a paper from the Rotterdam Eye Institute also concluded that relatives of patients with glaucoma were at least 10 times more susceptible to a glaucoma than controls. Something as asymptomatic as anger recession, seen in almost 20 to 80 percent eyes with blunt trauma. 60 to 100 percent of eyes with the traumatic hyphema have anger recession. Up to 20 percent eyes of anger recession develop glaucoma, and this is more if the anger recession exceeds 180 degrees. Almost 50 percent of contralateral eyes also develop glaucoma. So these patients are more at risk of developing glaucoma. So in this patient, a family history positive. Uh, history of myopia positive and anger recession, although disc and IOP normal at the moment, is a glaucoma suspect and we need to follow him up closely. Steroid use. Steroid use in any form, and in the past, present, whether in the form of ocular drops, ointments, intravitreal injections, periocular steroids, inhalational use for asthma, uh, to or topical use for in the form of skin ointments, lotions, uh, uh, oral medications at, are at risk of developing glaucoma because almost 18% of the general population could be a steroid responder and this increases to almost 40% in patients of POAG. So any use of steroid with absolutely normal pressures and this at the moment makes a patient a glaucoma suspect. Our second patient is a 35-year-old male uh, who complains of diminution of vision in the right eye for a few months. He gives a history of uh, recurrent episodes of redness and pain in the right eye for a few years and has been treated with topical and oral steroids in the past on, uh, off and on for the same. Extensively investigated because of, uh, as you can guess, it would be a case of probably uveitis and was actually a B27 positive. On examination, the right eye's vision activity is around 6, 12, and 6, left eye 6, 6, and 6. Pressures as of now are 18 and 14. Slit time examination, the right eye, as you probably see, here, is a typical uveitic eye with posterior sinai case, occlusio pupillae, a complicated cataract, gonioscopy showing typical uveitic peripheral anterior sinai case. His discs, al although in both the eyes are okay, right, uh, no uh, anterior chamber inflammation as of now, few old vitreous cells in the right eye, but he is a glaucoma suspect because uveitis and glaucoma gives an incidence of almost 10 to 20% in acute cases and up to 40% in chronic cases. Trabeculitis related IOP spike in viral uveitis, posthumous loss, min, herpetic keratovivitis, very important risk factors. Chronic inflammation leading to debris in angle and HLA-B27 and uh, sarcoidosis, eye related, again are important. 
we see a lot of steroid responders in these patients as well. So the disease and the treatment both predispose this patient to glaucoma. So any UVIT, even with normal IOPs, when you see him, is a suspect and needs to be followed. Many times we see patients' history, normal history doesn't reveal anything major. We examine the patient, see a suspicious disc, a suspicious perimetry, normal pressures, and then we go back and ask questions for low tension or normal tension disease, especially history of migraine, cluster headaches, small joint pains, rheumatoid arthritis, vasospastic disorders, Raynaud's phenomenon, history of nighttime antihypertensive, very important, reducing the ocular perfusion pressure at night, causing ocular hypertension, very important risk factor for vascular uh, dysregulation to the optic nerve. History of sleep apnea, history of excessive water drinking. You have patients who say, Can I, okay, I get up, have two liters of water immediately. That causes immediate circulatory overload in the eye, increase in IOP spike at that point of time, pressure damage. But when you see them in the OPD, pressures are fine, but an important history. History of certain breath holding exercises, yoga postures, upside down postures, all cause vascular compromise on the nerve and we need to pick up history. Non-progressive visual field defects with glaucomatous damage, normal IOPs could indicate a once a one event damage which could have happened, which could be a, a major hypervolumic shock, a, blood, a major accident or blood loss. These history is not only important in diagnosing, but also is important in the form of treatment because of these are the things which we're going to ask a patient to avoid in the future. Very important to pick up. Our third case, a 50 year old, again, coming for a regular eye checkup, no history suggestive of any eye disease, no major systemic issues, vision's okay, slit lamp okay, gonio open, this healthy, but pressures are 24 and 23 on Goldman's. Is raised IOP a risk factor? We all know that IOP is the only modifiable risk factor. Various studies have shown us that decreasing IOP will decrease the progression of glaucoma. As pointed out earlier, the ocular hypertension treatment study clearly showed us that a 20% IOP drop reduces the conversion of open, uh, ocular hypertension to POAG by almost half. The early manifest glaucoma clearly tells us that every millimeter of mercury which you reduce will reduce the ch chance of progression by 10%. But does this mean we treat all ocular hypertensives? Almost 90% of eyes uh, who are untreated in the OHTS study did not progress. Do we need to treat all? No, we need to stratify the risk. We need to see who is at risk, who's less at risk, who's more at risk. And an important risk factor in that is central corneal thickness. The ocul ocular hypertension treatment study clearly told us that subjects with decreased CCT were at higher risk of developing POAG. Uh, eyes with less than 555 microns were three times more likely to develop POAG compared to eyes more than 588. There is no formula for correcting IOP values. I repeat, there is no formula. We use it only as a guideline. We use it as a guideline to help us approximately tell us what our target pressures in a particular individual would be, whether we should be treated or not, but no IOL calculation formulae really work. So if this patient of ours again, tests are normal, pressures are 24, 23. Let's take a scenario where his pachymetry is 490 micron. 490 micron with these pressures, irrespective of absence of any other risk factor, get our antennae up. We may not treat him, we may choose to observe him, but we are suspicious of him. The same patient, everything same, pachymetry of 600. We are more at ease because we know that the pachymetry of 600 is going to be more protective for him. So probably we follow him up as well, but not as close as what we'll follow up this particular individual. We see a variety of secondary glaucomas for something as simple as pigments on the endothelium uh, to a densely pigmented trabecular meshwork to pigments uh, on the uh, lens uh, equator, which we see in pigment dispersion syndrome. You may have patients who are coming to you completely asymptomatic, but you should remember that these patients at five or 10 years have a 15% chance of requiring medications for glaucoma. You may see them and they're absolutely normal, but they are glaucoma suspects. Patients of pseudo exfoliation, can have open angle, closed angle glaucomas. Risk of uh, their risk of developing glaucoma is almost 40 to 45 percent at five years after initial diagnosis of pseudo exfoliation. Very important risk factor. Any post uh, corneal transplant eye, irrespective of when you see him, pressures may be normal because of compromised angles, a variety of reasons. Always at risk of developing an IOP spike. Presence of a vascular occlusion when you see the patient, pressures being normal, have to follow this up for uh, looking at uh, various neovascularization of the iris angle because these are patients whom we can catch if we are suspicious of them. So my take home message would be a meticulous history taking, a thorough slit lamp examination is very important as I cannot reemphasize that gonioscopy in every case, a management of primary angle closure suspects will be taken later. We need baseline investigations to compare with the future and risk stratification. Every patient has to be stratified who is more at risk, who's less at risk and treat, observe accordingly. Thank you.